Do you suffer from sandy, grainy stools, painful urination without infection, eye pain that makes you want to just scratch your eyes out, chronic muscle pain and trigger points, anemia that won't respond to care, mood and behavioral issues, or heavy metal toxicity? Or how about a bunch of these? If so, you may suffer from oxalate overload. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at optimal. Oxalates, or oxalic acid, are one of the most acidic substances in your tissues and lead to an acidic pH, which can result in many metabolic issues, one of which is stone formation, specifically oxalic acid stones or calcium stones. And these stones could result in massive kidney pain and dysfunction. The oxalic acid can be seen like little shards of glass in the tissue. So if you picture lots of shards of glass in your tissue, these shards of glass can result in tissue damage, ranging from trigger points to, say, stone formation in the kidneys that can lead to bleeding and damage of the ureter and other parts of the urogenital system. What other contributions to poor physiology or dysfunction can oxalates make? Well, they can result in aplastic anemia, which would lead to low white blood cell counts and low platelet counts chronically on your blood work if it's not being addressed. Oxalates have been shown to worsen symptoms in autism spectrum disorder. So autistic children who have been on low oxalate diets and have removed oxalates from their bodies have shown improvement in autistic symptoms. Oxalates can build up if you have single nucleotide polymorphisms or genetic mutations in AGT or CBS genes. Oxalates very, very strongly bind heavy metals. And unlike EDTA, which they they match the affinity for heavy metals of EDTA, whereas EDTA is a chelating agent, oxalates bind the heavy metals, but they don't chelate them or remove them from their body. They chelate them and hold them very strongly inside your body. So they increase your toxic load from heavy metals. If you have any issues with liver, kidney, or gallbladder metabolism, then that can lead to a buildup in oxalates. How? Well, if you're not properly clearing or metabolizing or getting rid of the oxalates, they build up in the body and can have the results we've discussed already. They can also lead to nutrient deficiencies because if we're talking about the gallbladder, if you have poor bile acid production and function, and the bile acids aren't binding the oxalates to get rid of them, then the oxalates will bind heavy metals so you can and minerals, which can lead to zinc, magnesium, calcium, B6, and or iron deficiencies. So if you have chronic mineral or metal deficiencies, it may be due to oxalates. What else can increase oxalates? Certain microbes or infections, so candida, is one that can increase oxalate production. Helicobacter pylori increases oxalate production. And parasites can result in increased oxalate loads in the body. So gut dysbiosis or bacterial infection or fungal infection can increase oxalate load and potentially contribute to these other symptoms or findings. How about your diet? Does the diet contribute to oxalate load? Absolutely. Many things that you would think are very healthy and that you're probably doing or consuming because they're quote unquote health foods actually increase oxalate levels. So what are they? Well, greens increase oxalates. 
Soy increases oxalates. Nuts increase oxalates. Berries increase oxalates. Processed foods increase oxalates. Polyethylene glycol, which is a, an ingredient found in many foods and uh, supplements or medications, increases oxalates. Miralax increases oxalates. So if you're constipated and taking Miralax or giving your child Miralax because of constipation, you may be increasing their oxalate load. How about these two? Collagen leads to increased oxalates and bone broth, which is high in collagen, can lead to increased oxalates, especially bone broth or collagen in the context of candida or fungus, which break down the collagen to hydroxyproline um, and, and, and enters the oxalic acid cycle. So if we're having contributions of oxalates from food sources, from microbes, from uh, organ dysfunction, from um, genetic mutations, what can we do? How do we treat oxalate overload? Well, one thing that is going to be very key is good hydration. Hydration is key. Another thing that is key is good sulfur levels. Sulfur opposes oxalates one to one. So if you can increase your sulfur through say N-acetylcysteine or glutathione, uh, that's a great way to oppose oxalates. If you have uh, if you have any of these deficiencies discussed over here, B6, magnesium, zinc, calcium, iron, these things can help oppose it by bringing those uh, levels back up. So you want nutrient sufficiency. A low fructose diet will help lower oxalates because fruit in, is high in fructose and fructose promotes oxalates. High fructose corn syrup will promote oxalate formation. So say less than three fruits a day will help decrease your oxalate load. And then you wanna supplement with probiotics to help the gut and any potential bacterial or fungal infection or overgrowth. Calcium, magnesium, citrate, the things we've already discussed there, replacing these things over here. And lastly, Epsom salt baths can help as well. Epsom salt is a great source of magnesium, and so the magnesium can help replenish your magnesium stores um, and, and, and balance your mineral ratios. So if you are suffering from any of these symptoms or a group of these symptoms, and doctors or practitioners you've seen haven't been able to put the pieces together for you, they may not know about oxalates, but oxalates may be the key to cracking your specific health puzzle and reaching out to a functional medicine practitioner that understands this, how to find it and how to deal with it will be key to you reaching a life at optimal.